We're in a new chapter. This is lesson 8.1 and we're going to talk about the multiples of unit fractions. I hope you saw lessons 5.4, 7.2, and 7.6 to help you. They're linked in the description. In video 7.2 we learned that a unit fraction is a fraction that has one as its numerator. It represents one part of the whole. One third is a unit fraction and names one of three equal parts. Here we have four times one eighth. It's equal to four eighths. And the fraction four eighths is the product. We can write a fraction as the product of a unit fraction and a whole number. Repeated addition of a unit fraction is when the same unit fractions are added together. We have one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth plus plus one eighth. The denominators are the same, so our sum is going to have eight as a denominator. And we add the numerators, one plus one plus one plus one, we have four. And the product of a whole number and a unit fraction shows how many times the unit fraction is added. We have four one eighths. We have four times one eighth. It's equal to four eighths. And we can simplify this four eighths to be one half, couldn't we? We've learned about that in 6.3. In video 7.6, we learned to write a mixed number as a fraction greater than one and a fraction greater than one as a mixed number. Here we have a mixed number four and two thirds. We learned in that video that we can multiply the whole number by the denominator, four times three, then add the numerator, the two. Four times three is 12, plus two more is 14. That is our new numerator. We use the same denominator. And if we have a fraction greater than one, we can divide this numerator 14 by the denominator three. 14 divided by three is four. The quotient is the whole number and the remainder because four times three is 12, that remainder two becomes the new numerator and we use the same denominator. Now, if that really confused you, you need to watch video 7.6 that's linked in the description. A pie was cut into eight equal slices for dessert. Afterwards, there was three eighths of the pie left over. Each of the leftover slices was put on a small plate. How many small plates were used? What part of the pie was put onto each plate? So we think we need to answer two questions. We've got how many small plates were used and what part of the pie was put onto each plate. And we can model the problem using a fraction circle. There were eight equal slices tells us the pie was cut into one eighth parts. Three one eighth size parts were left over. We can use unit fractions to show three eighths in two ways. We can say three eighths is equal to one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth. We can also say three eighths is equal to three times one eighth. And how many small plates were used? Three. What part of the pie was put onto each plate? A one eighth part. We can write a fraction greater than one as the product of a whole number and a unit fraction. Here we have five fourths. This numerator is larger than the denominator, it's greater. So we know this is a fraction greater than one. We can write it as the product of a whole number and unit fraction. Five fourths is equal to one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth. And we write five-fourths as the sum of unit fractions. Then use multiplication to show this repeated addition. It's five-fourths is equal to one, two, three, four, five times one-fourth. The product of a number and a counting number is a multiple of the number. We learned about multiples in video 
and the products of 1 times 5, 2 times 5, 3 times 5, and so on are multiples of 5. The multiples of 5, we skip count by 5s. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and so on. Well, we can also find the multiples of unit fractions. We can use models to find the multiples of a unit fraction, such as 1 fifth. Here we have 1 times 1 fifth. It's equal to 1 fifth. Here we have 2 times 1 fifth. That's equal to 2 fifths. Here we have 3 times 1 fifth. That's equal to 3 fifths. Do you see the pattern? Now we have 4 times 1 fifth. That's equal to 4 fifths and 5 times 1 fifth is equal to 5 fifths, and 6 times 1 fifth is equal to 6 fifths. And the multiples of 1 fifth are 1 fifth, 2 fifth, 3 fifths, 4 fifths, 5 fifths, 6 fifths. See what's happening to the multiples of this unit fraction? Because it has a 1 as a numerator and it's a unit fraction, its multiples have the same denominator and the numerators are going up, like counting numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. We can use a number line to write the multiples of a unit fraction, such as 1 third. We have a number line. Here's 0, 1, 2, 3. And we have these marks in between. If that's 0, then it's 0 thirds. That's 1 third, 2 thirds, 3 thirds. Same numerator and denominator, so it's equal to 1, isn't it? What would be the very next fraction? Look at the pattern. The multiples of 1 third will all have 3 as their denominator. We have 1 times 1 third, 2 times 1 third, 3 times 1 third. This would be 4 times 1 third. What would be the numerator? If you said 4, you're correct. And what would be the next multiple of 1 third? Look at the pattern. All the denominators are 3, and the numerators are going 1, 2, 3, 4. If you said 5, you're right. So do you know what the next numerator would be? Right here. If you said 6 thirds, you're right. That would be 6 times 1 third. We can use the fraction bars to complete the equation. We have one whole here, and here we have 4 1 6 parts. It's telling us that 4 6 is equal to some missing add-ins, 4 missing add-ins. Sorry about the focus there. Do you know what the 4 missing add-ins are? Looking at these fraction bars, we can see there are 4 1 6 parts here. Those must be the missing add-ins. They must be the unit fractions 1 6. That means 4 6 is equal to some whole number times 1 6. We see there are 1, 2, 3, 4 of them. It would be 4 times 1 6. We can write 4 6 as repeated addition, or we can write it as the product of a whole number in a unit fraction. We can write a fraction as the product of a whole number and a unit fraction. Here we have 7 twelfths, that's our product, and it's equal to 7 times 1 twelfth. We use the same denominator, see that, for the unit fraction. And unit fractions have a 1 for their numerator. And the whole number up here will be the same as the numerator and the product. See? These are the same, and we're using the same denominator. This is telling us there are 7 1 12th parts. 7 times 1 12th. Here we have a fraction greater than 1, 9 fourths. The numerator is greater than the denominator, so it's a fraction greater than 1. We use the same denominator 4 for the unit fraction, and unit fractions have a 1 for a numerator, and the 9 is telling us we have 9 1 fourth parts. That's 9 times 1 fourth. Here we have some true or false statements. 
We need to circle true or false. Two-thirds is a multiple of one-third. So our unit fraction is one-third. Do you think two-thirds is a multiple of one-third? If you said yes, you're right. This is true. This one says there is no multiple of one-seventh between four-sevenths and six-sevenths. So our unit fraction is one-seventh. Is this true or false? There is no multiple of one-seventh between four-sevenths and six-sevenths. If you said false, you're correct. Because one-seventh is a unit fraction, its multiples are one-sevenths, two-sevenths, three-sevenths, four-sevenths, five-sevenths, which is in between the four-sevenths and the six-sevenths, and six-sevenths, and so on. So this is false because there is a multiple of one-seventh between four-sevenths and six-sevenths. It's five-sevenths. Is this statement true or false? There is no multiple of one-eighth between two-eighths and three-eighths. You can think about this problem to help you answer this one. The multiples of one-eighth are going to have an eight for a denominator, and the numerators are going to be going up, like this one did, one, two, three, four, five, six. So is there a multiple of one-eighth between two-eighths and three-eighths? If we wrote them and listed them, would there be a multiple between those two fractions? If we start writing the multiples of one-eighth, we'd have one-eighth, two-eighths, three-eighths, four-eighths, and so on. There is no multiple in between the two-eighths and three-eighths. So this statement is true. Because they're unit fractions, the denominators are the same, and the numerators go one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Lisa needs half cup of brown sugar to make one batch of cookies. How many batches of cookies can she make with one and a half cups of brown sugar? We think we can write the mixed number one and a half as a fraction greater than one, then the numerator will show how many times one half is in one and a half. And again, we learned how to do this in video 7.6. We multiply the whole number to the denominator. One times two is two. We add the numerator, that gives us a three. We do one times two plus one, that's a three. And that's for the numerator. We use the same denominator, two. And three halves is equal to half plus half plus half. That's three times one half. So how many batches of cookies can Lisa make? If you said three, you're right. She can make three batches with one and a half cups of brown sugar. For our next lesson, 8.2, we're going to learn about multiples of fractions that aren't unit fractions. Have a wonderful day, and I hope I see you there. Bye.